Hi everyone, Kevin here. Um, I thought I'd do a quick video response instead of a, a long text uh, response to a couple of the video questions I got recently uh, regarding the greenhouse. Um, this past summer in July I was taking down almost 70 foot, I think it's 68 and a half foot by 32 foot wide greenhouse that has one partition down the center. Uh, this is a, an older aluminum frame greenhouse that had single pane glass panes over it uh, throughout the system. There was a great, um, it wasn't just the greenhouse, there was the heating system involved in it that was a, uh, a boiler system that was both uh, run by natural gas and could be uh, run by um, uh, fuel oil as well but they use natural gas at the uh, facility where I acquired the, the greenhouse. They uh, heated the water and it was pumped through a uh, two inch or th three and two inch uh, radiator type pipe with many metal fins all the way down the, the, the length of the pipes. And that was pumped into each section of the, of the greenhouse. Uh, and I guess the system worked fairly well. They had blowers on the east side of the building and vents on the left and the west side of the, the building. They had uh, awning windows that opened up at about seven foot high on east and west walls of the greenhouse. The greenhouse stood uh, lengthwise north and south. The uh, greenhouse was up against the building on the north side. And, uh, and in that building is where the boiler system was. And this was a teaching facility uh, for horticulture. The, um, so the, the, the cooling system was uh, through convection, through their fan systems, uh, and through their peak uh, venting exit. Uh, the construction of the building was basically a, a concrete pour for two foot high walls and then above that was the aluminum frame and trusses above that and glass, single pane glass panels. Very inefficient as far as um, uh, a thermal barrier. Uh, so heat just radiated right out through that system. However, during the summer months, and July is we, or this, this past summer, we had record uh, breaking temperatures. And to Dan, uh, who had questions about taking it down, how long it took, it took a month. I was in excellent physical condition when I, when I started taking this down. Uh, temperatures were over 170 towards the peak. Uh, unfortunately, when they closed the greenhouse, everything was closed up and it was all mechanical. Uh, and, uh, and all of that, uh, so everything had froze up. Even the insulation off some of the wiring had just become brittle and just crumbled or it melted. Uh, so there was no way of me doing it without completely taking things apart. So the temperatures were extremely high inside of there. So that's something, Dan, be very cautious. Plan your attack. Try to have other people and drink plenty of fluids if you're gonna do this during the summer months. Um, Pam had asked, how I'm going to approach uh, the heating and cooling. Well, I live in Oswego, New York, uh, which is right up near Lake Ontario. Um, we've had very little sunshine during the, the winter months. I'm actually using LED lighting and uh, fluorescent lighting to uh, light my plants inside of my house and in the little Harbor Freight greenhouse, the 10 by 12 greenhouse that I have attached to the house. Um, and Pam had asked about, geez, are we considering using subterranean heating and cooling system? And I'm not, I'm not well versed in that, in that system. I just took a quick look online to see if I could see spe any more specifics about it. Uh, I thought it would be best for me to just describe, uh, since people are always asking about how I heat this place, and if I didn't have the greenhouse attached to the uh, east end, so behind me is east, behind you is west, that way is south, uh, and all my glass is to the south. Just turn. So there's the dog run through the French doors there. There's some tomato plants and small ba baby fig tree. One second.
small baby fig tree there. Alongside of it, I get a little uh, pecan tree started right there and some other things. But there we are uh, in, behind that, uh, oh, the iron and block walls there, which is our basically our dog run, is the temporary chicken coop, which will be attached to the greenhouse. And there you can see those are seven foot banks still out there. Uh, let me see if I can turn this back around and get back over there. Oh, let me show you first. I'm going to show you the chimney in my living room of our house. So I'm going to go up the chimney. Oh, first, before I show you that, there's the wood burning stove, a small little number three Yodel wood burning stove. A little bit of wood next to it there. And we'll go up the chimney. And this is actually three chimneys all side by side and we go up 25 feet, uh, 24 and a half feet where the central chimney penetrates through the roof of the house and either side of that central chimney are two additional chimneys. One that has a little uh, flag staff, uh, flagstone uh, trim around the top but the other side I didn't put it on. And, uh, and I have a little third floor room up there where my some of my plumbing uh, equipment and, and supplies are. Let me see if I can get around here again. Okay, so how this works? You saw the wood burning stove right here in the in the first uh, in the second going to the the exhaust uh, for the flue for my uh, wood burning stove is in the central part of that chimney. The hot air rises from that, and through uh, through heat transfer, it's going to the stone, the mass of the other two chimneys, and there's a fan just behind this wall. Uh, in a pit that takes that hot air from the peak of the of the house, sucks the hot air down, and puts it through a plenum, a channel that goes uh, north and south, on the, right in the central part of my house, and that's all washed stone that I build a pit, which most people would say, geez, it's like a basement or a crawl space underneath the house. Well, I built these metal channels, wrap them with, with steel, and place in the center of, the, of that whole pit uh, uh, 300 tons of washed stone. And that's my thermal mass. That's where I store the heat. And we use convection currents by one single fan right behind the wood burning stove here behind this wall. There's a small pit that you can go down into and those two chimneys open up. There's a fan just to the opposite side with an air filter there and it just takes that warm air from the peak, sucks it down the chimneys, and go, goes in through the thermal mass down below the, the, the slab on the rest of the house. So, so there's, when I built this place, most of the effort went into what's really subterranean here. And so there were footers poured all the way around for a standard footer for a foundation. And there was insulation laid uh, along the inside of what most people would consider a crawl space or a, or a, uh, a cellar like area but not a full height cellar. And then a concrete floor was poured on top of the insulation. Oh I'm sorry there was vapor barrier sealed on the inside of that and on the outside of the block wall as well. So and I would do it a little bit differently as I'm, I'll mention in a moment with the greenhouse. So here I've got this cavity filled with stone where air can flow between the stone, come up through another plenum, another steel chamber on the east side of the house, and come up through ducts and release it to the second floor. And as you saw up there, you could see that there's an open envelope to the house. So the air can flow through the house. So as I pump air down, it's not going into a closed room that's sealed off. It's actually flowing out as the heat rises again. It'll go up towards the peak and then I draw it back down. Now during the summer months, I just open up skylights or open up windows and the heat goes up and I allow that to go out and I take all the cool air from the evening hours that I'm pumping down into the, into the thermal mass and I'm keeping the house nice and cool. Also what I did when I built this house is this is a post and beam construction house and I really didn't show that very well. I'll turn around the camera around in a moment and, and just give you a quick glimpse of it. But they're basically six by six. Uh, eastern hemlock, native woods from around here, 
beams, posts, and beams, and then one inch hemlock. Then on the outside of that, a 5 8 inch drywall, which is a fire stop, a fire barrier. And then two layers of 6 mil uh, plastic polyethylene that was sealed, duct taped. And then on, on the outside of that is I put four inches polyisocyanurate, a really nice insulation. Then another layer of hemlock, then a one inch airspace, and then another layer, and then five eighths inch T111, and then so on and so forth on out. There's also one layer of aluminum around that as well. And I won't go into the reasons for the, for the aluminum. However, so the house, is sealed up very very well and it's the opposite of what we can do with a greenhouse so when people come and they ask advice geez I want to build a building and all and I really don't want to pay energy bills like I haven't paid energy bills in over 30 years uh, and I'm talking about heating and cooling energy bills uh, just the aquariums that I have they generate so much heat all winter long that I have to keep a door open okay now, because I have the door white uh, and the door open that I kept open before was our doggy door. The dogs just go in and out uh, through the doggy door. Now that I've got the Harbor Freight greenhouse attached to the house, I have a full door opening all the time. And I have a mudroom door that's kept open all the time as well. So at opposite ends of the house, the east and west walls, uh, both doors are open. Now the mudroom is not heated but it's, it probably stays maybe about 70 degrees in the mudroom. Uh, my wife likes it nice and warm in here, so we always have it, I don't know, 74, 76 degrees in the house. It works extremely well. But as I was saying, when, when people come to talk to me, people are always telling, geez, I really want the best windows and, and so on. And, and what I see is many people make mistakes when they're building their, their homes and building whatever structures they're building. Uh, the, the most important layer is your, your air barrier. So you want to stop the air from flowing. Because it doesn't matter how much insulation you have. If the air is flowing through your house, you just lost the battle. You're wasting a lot of money. So the first thing is getting your air barrier. Then your vapor barrier. And your vapor barrier really needs to be on the heated side. So around here, winter months, we're heating our homes. So we want to have the vapor barrier before we get to the insulation because the condensation is going to leak into the insulation if we do it the other way. And many people do it that way. They're still doing it. Even new construction going up, I see it happen regularly. So then your, your insulation, then your windows. So the windows and doors, I mean, these are 30-year-old Pella windows and doors, and they aren't even, they're, they're a double pane, but they're just a second pane put up against it. So moisture gets in between them. As well, since we have so many plants in here, it's not perfect. So all these are going to get changed in the future when I get the opportunity. So with a greenhouse, and that's quite a bit different situation. We have this really leaky system. We can have a pretty good air barrier, and we can have a good vapor barrier to a certain extent, but we can't give it much insulation. So uh, doing as much insulation as you can around some thermal mass is my idea. And, uh, and then we can use convection currents like your subterranean heating and cooling system. Uh, you're just blowing the air by the thermal mass, like the stones here in, underneath this house. You can use water tanks, like the 275 gallon water tanks. That's one of the things I'm considering doing. But I will need to throw in some additional heat up here where I live because we're not getting enough sun uh, to raise the temperature significantly. I've been, been monitoring how much sun we get, what our temperatures are, high and low. I have computer systems in the greenhouse to tell me how well things have worked. And we're not getting enough solar energy during these winter months because where we live, we have the lake effect cloud cover all, you know, I don't say all the time, but a significant part of December, January, February, and March and I need to be keep, keep my, my citrus trees growing and keep everything going during those times and uh, being our diet, we depend on vegetables all the time. So uh, how am I gonna uh, attach, attack this situation? Initially, I was going to dig a, uh, a, a 
pit like I described in here and either use wash stone or use the uh, water tanks. Because of its location around pond systems and the swale systems that I put in already, when I dug down later on this summer out there, there's some water that's just flowing through the, the, the ground uh, because I've been very good as far as putting water into the ground. Uh, I, that's a concern. So I may end up building a little bit above ground but I will be using some geothermal cooling loops. So it's not I'm gonna have some big company do it. I'm just gonna go ahead and, and dig some trenches and put in my, you know, like one inch black plastic pipe down in there and use that to cool uh, the house during the, the uh, summer months when it's very hot. I'll use that, the greenhouse I'm talking about, I'll use that energy from the earth, put it into my heat uh, battery, my thermal mass units, like 275 gallon, uh, 275 gallon totes, and I have 24 of those uh, for the for the greenhouse. And I'll insulate around those, and I'll probably put those in one large block, probably outside of the greenhouse, since I can't really do the job that I want to do inside the greenhouse. I'll also be using something like a rocket mass heater inside the greenhouse for backup and I may be hooking up a gasification unit uh, depending on how things work. The building will be attached to a chicken coop. Now the chickens also generate uh, some heat. And I've been toying with the idea of using a compost pile to heat the, uh, heat the, the thermal mass water uh, batteries, the, the, the insulated 275 gallon totes during those winter months since we're not getting enough sunlight. So I could be using, you know, uh, solar thermal heaters that are used for hot water systems and that would work great in most parts of the country. It won't work where I live. Uh, not to heat the amount of water that I need, need to have heated so that I can go ahead and, and heat and uh, cool, uh, warm the, uh, the uh, internal greenhouse that's going to have significant losses through, through the glass or polycarbonate if I put that on, on the outside of the greenhouse. Uh, I hope that I've answered, <laughs> addressed these questions. Please leave a comment and let me know if this is helpful at all. I know this is getting long so I won't go any, any further with, with this video. But I wanted to try and get this out today to try and address the, the questions. And thanks Pam and Dan. I appreciate your uh, your comments uh, a great deal. Thanks so much and have a great day. Bye-bye now.